All right, now, as we begin modeling, I'm going to start with just a plane. Now, I don't know exactly how many segments this plane has unless I turn on edged faces. I mean, I can see it over here, but visually I want to know more about what's going on. So I'm going to go to the plus sign here and go to configure viewports. Under visual style and appearance, I want to turn on display selected with edged faces. That's going to make it so only the selected object has edged faces rather than everything in the viewport. Personally, I'm also going to uncheck show the view cube. I really just don't like that it takes up space and I don't use it. There are, in my opinion, better ways to navigate around the viewport. So hit OK, I get rid of that. Now I can see that I really want to drop this to two segments in each dimension. That's really all I want and all I need to start with here. So I'm also going to look at adjusting the position of this object, moving around it, so I can just make sure that everything's kind of in the right spots. So as we start to move things around, we're gonna want all of this stuff to be editable poly. So I'm gonna go convert to editable poly, and then we can start grabbing vertices and moving them around. So the way that we're gonna work here is basically a technique that I really haven't seen anyone else do. I don't think it's a new technique. I mean, people have been modeling faces like this for a long time, but I've really never seen anybody use this technique for modeling the full figure. So while it is still technically box modeling, we're not starting with a box. So it's more or less, I suppose, planar modeling. But since all the tools we're gonna use are still part of the editable poly modifier, we're just gonna call it poly modeling. So we're gonna to start to just kind of rough in and move this stuff around to fit the overall position of the form. We're not gonna worry at this point about anything being too precise or too perfect. We just wanna kind of get it generally laid out and roughed in. All right, so that's pretty good. Now we're gonna actually start grabbing this and moving it around. So I've gotta do that for each viewport. So we're gonna go down to configure viewports here visual style display selected with edge faces all right so that works in all our viewports now so here we actually want to turn off edge faces and we're going to go and do the configure viewports display selected with edge faces so that's set per viewport and now we're going to go into the plane or the element select the entire piece and we're going to copy it so i'm just going to hold on shift and drag it over Clone to element, not object. Objects can give us a brand new chunk where this is just going to be a piece of the overall object. So now we want to rotate and move it. It's going to end up being our shoulder mass. So we're going to go back to vertex. We're going to start moving this stuff around. So again, we're just doing some rough blocking here. We're not worrying about absolute precision at this point. So these are going to have to come in a bit, out and down. Now, as we look around it from this view, we're gonna see some of this stuff definitely needs to be moved around a bit. But again, we're not worried about absolute precision. We just are blocking. So the blocking phase is gonna kind of be the quick and dirty part of all of this, where we just rough things in and get things just kind of generally laid out where we want them. Now, for the most part, our top viewport here is not doing us a whole lot of good. I'm gonna switch this to my back viewport. I'm gonna turn on shaded. And then again, I'm gonna to go to the configure viewports and turn on display selected with edged faces. As you can see here, I can see inside of this stuff from the back and I really don't want that. So I'm gonna to go to my object properties and turn on back face cull. That's gonna make it so now when I'm looking at this from the back, I can tell that this piece is on the front of the body because I can see through it. Now I'm not gonna worry about this stuff not matching up. Obviously his arms are straight out here and straight down or mostly straight down in this view. So we're going to ignore that. We're gonna shift drag this piece to the back. Again, clone to element. We're gonna rotate it around and then we're gonna form it so it starts to take on the shape of this lat muscle. Now if we have too much stuff starting to get in the way, front and back. We can always here turn on ignore back facing, which is gonna make it so that the pieces on the front of the object can't be selected while I'm working on the back. For now, I don't think we're gonna have too much of an issue with that, but we'll see. Yeah, let's bring this out a little more.
All right, now we definitely want the vertices along the spine to be indented basically further than they are here, but we do need to make sure that we're not getting things too far in or too far out. So again, these side views are really just kind of a reference to help us from getting things too far out of whack. All right, that is a pretty good start. And from here on, we'll be kind of building more muscle masses and connecting things together.